glorious reign of Pope St. Pius V, the Renaissance leader of the Catholic Reformation. Throughout the Middle Ages, the collapse of the Roman Empire and the fall of Byzantium brought political disunion and instability to Europe, yet most of it was united under one true faith, the main remnant besides the ruins of the ancient Roman Empire. Summarizing what at the time was nearly universally believed, Pope Boniface VIII in 1302 declared, There is one holy Catholic Apostolic Church, headed by the Roman Pontiff, to whom God ordains both spiritual and temporal authority over the state. United Europe produced great works in art, literature, music, and architecture throughout its Middle Ages and cultural renaissance. During that time of cultural and intellectual revival, artists such as Raphael and Botticelli and architects such as Michelangelo and Bruno Leschi were sponsored by the church and wealthy merchants to create and build impressive works of art. Seeing the artistic revival in Rome, Pope Julius II was inspired to build a new papal basilica. However, as the construction and fundraisers for this basilica began, some kindled the flames of dissent and chaos and sought to bring the established social order to its knees. It was precisely the selling of indulgences used to pay for the new basilica that outraged rebellious Augustinian monk Martin Luther, who wrote against the corruption he claimed was going on and questioned the teachings of the church in his 95 Thesis. The Pope does not intend to remit and cannot remit any penalties other than those which he has imposed. Legend says that Luther on All Hallows Eve of 1517 nailed his 95 Thesis on the door of the Kessel Church of Wittenberg. While this is likely a myth, his ideas and slander spread like noxious weeds through the use of the newly invented Gutenberg printing press. As the clergy failed to respond adequately, his attacks against the church, her practices, and her clergy intensified. Luther's radical, individualist ideas and anti-Catholic rhetoric ignited bloody present revolts and iconoclasms in modern-day Germany, Austria, the Swiss cantons, and eastern France. As Luther became more radical, his ideas became more alarming. On the mass as on a rock, the whole of the papacy is based with its monasteries, bishoprics, colleges, altars, services, and doctrines. If the sacrilegious and cursed custom of the Mass is overthrown, then the whole must fall. The power of the Pope was threatened as many German and Scandinavian sovereigns supported Luther, who had brought them away to take full control of their subjects and money. With the confusion spreading across Europe, there was an urgent need to call an ecumenical council to clarify the teachings of the Catholic Church and end the corruption going on in the churches. Pope Leo X died the next year and left a lot of urgent problems to his successors who came and went. Pope Paul III, against the advice of the Roman Curia, convened a council at Trent to condemn the principles and doctrines of Protestantism, to clarify the doctrines of the Church, and to end the corruption amongst the clergy. But his death, that of his successor Julius III, and the accidental sack of Rome by Charles V all delayed the council. It was on May the 6th of 1527 that an unpaid mercenary army of Lansquenets, led by Duke Charles III, without any order from the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, sacked Rome, forcing the Pope to flee to the Castel San Angelo and testing the earthly power of the Pope. Finally, his stubborn successor, Pope Paul IV, was replaced by Pope Pius IV, who with 270 bishops concluded and approved the decrees, canons, and anathemas of the Council, addressing corruption and heresy and clarifying teachings on the veneration of saints, the interpretation of scriptures, the seven sacraments, and original sin. It is not lawful for anyone who holds a benefits requiring personal residence to absent himself. If anyone saith that by faith alone the impious is justified, let him be anathema. The Ecumenical Council was to show to the world that the Catholic Church could carry out internal reforms itself. The Holy Council of Trent, while confirming the complete episcopal power of the Pope over the universal church, also provided that the bishops can meet as a true and proper college, acting with a single authority to define and rule the interests of the universal church. This formed the basis of the new concept of collegiality, which was abused by Pope John XXIII to justify convening the Second Vatican Council and most recently by Pope Francis to congregate bishops for a synod on the family. Soon after, Pope Pius IV died and the conclave with the lobbying of Cardinal St. Charles Borromeo, who had the control of the conclave of 53 cardinals, elected 62-year-old Cardinal Michel Giuslieri, who had become known to hate nepotism and have a passion for orthodoxy. Michel had entered the Dominican order at an age of 14, then, after teaching theology and philosophy, was appointed as abbot and became inquisitor near Protestant Switzerland, until in 1557, Pope Paul IV appointed him Grand Inquisitor in Rome. Now, he took the name Pius V and uttered a small prayer showing how much he cared for the church and its faithful. God grant me the grace to so act that they may grieve more for my death than for my election. Upon being elected, Pope St. Pius V abolished the annual banquet which used to commemorate 
the anniversary of papal coronations and instead distributed the money which would have been spent on that to the poor. He issued edicts forbidding excessive pomp in marriages and expulsed the prostitutes from Rome. He ordered new sewers to be built and nudes in art pieces to be covered with loincloths. In accordance with the council, Pius V published the Catechism of Trent, canonized the Roman Missal for all time, and revised the bravery, had published a recent translation of the Bible, and established doctrine classes for the young. He ordered the founding of seminaries for the proper training of priests. By the end of the century, almost all of the clerical abuses which Luther had ferociously attacked had been eradicated. In March 1571, under St. Pius V, the Sacred Congregation of the Index published a list of books condemned as dangerous to faith and morals. Authors singled out would include Montaigne, Descartes, Voltaire, Pascal, Diderot, and Rizzo. The actions of His Holiness have an effect yet today. Efforts to prevent the spread of pornography, satanic literature, and other harmful materials still continue among some conservative groups. In the U.S., the National Catholic Legion of Decency engaged in boycotts and censorship of films offensive to Christian principles from 1933 until in 1948 the Supreme Court granted protection to filmmakers from the First Amendment. Pope St. Pius V worked hard throughout his pontificate to clean up the church. In May of 1567, he forbade wealthy landowners from investiture. In March of 1569, he threw out the Jews from all of the papal states except for ghettos in Rome and Ancona. The remaining Jews form ghettos which can still be discerned as Jewish quarters in Rome today. In February of 1571, he suppressed the Humiliati, a corrupt monastic order of Milan. He visited hospitals and supported missions in the New World, which themselves would have a great influence in shaping the religious identity of the Americas. Despite his busy schedule, he always made the time to make at least two meditations a day on bended knees in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. He worked also to contain the spread of the Protestant heresy. He called on Philip II of Spain to preserve his Dutch subjects in the Catholic faith and sent troops to France to help Catherine de' Medici to get rid of the Huguenots. In England, nonetheless, the usurper queen Elizabeth I of England undid all of the reforms of Mary Tudor, began the persecution of English Catholics, and sent Anglicanism into even deeper heresy. Under Elizabeth I, the Catholic Mass was banned. Roman priests were executed, and personal devotional items like rosary beads were banned. In Regnans in Excelsis, the Pope declared her deprived of her pretended title to the aforesaid crown and of all lordship, dignity, and privilege whatsoever. The anti-Catholic rule of Elizabeth and her subsequent excommunication would increase the hostilities between Rome and Britain. The tension between Catholic Rome and Anglican Britain is still present today. When Pope Benedict XVI visited England in September of 2010, protests took place across the country against his visit and his religious positions. The bull also caused a riff in the Irish Parliament, where the mostly Catholic population increasingly desired freedom from the British, which would culminate in a war of independence in 1919. In order to further unite the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope canonized a missal which is still to be used forever in every Roman church for the celebration of the liturgy. By this present constitution, which will be valid henceforth, now and forever, we order and enjoin that nothing must be added to our recently published missal. With this, he asserted papal control over the liturgy of the Church and set in ideas which form the basis of religious conservatism. This document, still binding today, has been the subject of many liturgical controversies within the Catholic Church. Until Pope Paul VI decided to ignore the command of Pope Pius V with one missal in a common language, the Catholic Church experienced great unity and growth, a remnant of which is still visible today. In the late 16th century, the Mufti of the Ottoman Sultan continued to proclaim Yihad on Christendom, yet most European monarchs underestimated his threats. Turkish Emperor Selimus II was plotting to overrun all Christendom with his arms and to add all the Western Kingdom to his empire. In May 1565, the Ottomans laid siege to the island of Malta until Christian reinforcements arrived four months later to drive them out. In August of 1571, after more than a year of desperate fighting and outnumbered 7 to 1, the island of Cyprus fell to Muslim invaders. Looking at the desperate situation, the Pope decided to unite as much of Europe as he could under the banner of Jesus Christ to be a match for the Muslim Ottoman Turks. While France, the Holy Roman Empire, and Portugal never managed to join, by May of 1571, the Pope had managed to convince his own states, the Habsburg states of Spain, Naples, Sicily, the Republic of Venice, the Republic of Genoa, the Grand Duchy of Tuscany, the Duchies of Savoy, Parma and Urbino, and the Knights of Malta with a combined force of 200 galleys, 100 other ships, 50,000 infantry, and 4,500 cavalry to agree to support each other in the case of an Ottoman attack. The Pope had begun a moderately complex alliance system, which in the future would be seen again as nation-states sought the support of each other, fearing an attack by another nation-state. The defensive military alliance system begun by the Pope still exists at its core in organizations such as NATO, which have been created with the intention of uniting different and relatively smaller nations against a common larger enemy. As in the Holy League, NATO countries pledged a certain amount of troops to knowing also that the Turks had never lost any naval battle. 
The Pope called on all Christians to pray the rosary for victory in case of a Muslim invasion and granted a plenary indulgences to the soldiers and crews of the ships that would fight in the Holy League. He had made and blessed a standard for the Christians to use in battle. By the end of September, the Holy League had made its way across the Adriatic Sea and was anchored between the west coast of Greece and the island of Corfu. The guns on Holy League ships fired down on the mass of invading Turkish ships. The Christians used swivel guns against the enemy ships and the Turkish bowmen fired dark volleys of arrows. The Muslim vessels then tried to surround the left flank of the Christian line, but only split themselves from the rest. The other Muslim ships fought on, but eventually surrendered, as the flagships of John of Austria, the commander of the Holy League, and of Ali Pasha, commander of the Turks, collided. But both ships attacked each other. Ali Pasha was killed, and the standard that the Pope had made for the Holy League was raised over the Sultana, which eventually sunk. The Christians had lost 7,500 men and had 17 other ships destroyed, yet the Holy League prevailed, capturing 137 ships, sinking 50, and freeing about 12,000 Christians from Turkish slaveholders. At the moment, Pope St. Pius V had a vision. The Christian fleet is victorious. The Pope instituted a new Catholic feast of Our Lady of Victory on the 7th of October to commemorate the battle and added it to the newly canonized Roman Missal. Had it not been for the intervention of St. Pius V, European culture and the Catholic religion might not have been might have been suppressed by the Ottoman Turks. This battle had prevented the Ottoman Empire from expanding further and ended the threat of a naval invasion by the Ottomans. The Pope was now planning to give a final blow to Islam by forming a general alliance with the Italian cities, Poland, France, and all of Christian Europe. He had begun negotiations for this purpose, when suddenly, in May of 1572, he died of a kidney disease, saying once again, O Lord, increase my sufferings and my patience.